So welcome back to Child Health Safety and Nutrition. Uh, this is assignment two. Hope you are having a wonderful week. So let's dive into nutrition. So as a teacher, one of the most important things you can do is to help children develop healthy eating habits. As you know, children need a balanced diet with food from all food groups, vegetables and fruits, whole grains and protein foods. Children need, on average, three meals a day and one to two, one to three snacks a day. Healthy snacks are just as important as the food served at, at meals. So the best foods are, like I mentioned, whole, fresh, unprocessed foods such as fresh fruits and vegetables, whole grains, dairy and meats, and home cooked meals. Nutrition is defined as how food affects the health of the body. Food is essential. It provides all the necessary nutrients for survival and helps the body function and stay healthy. Food is comprised of macronutrients, including protein, carbohydrate, and fat that not only offers calories to fuel the body and give it energy, but also plays a specific role in maintaining health. Food also supplies micronutrients, such as vitamins and minerals, and Lytochemicals that don't only provide energy, but also serve a variety of critical functions to ensure the body operates optimally. So a nutrient-dense diet filled with minerals and vitamins that help support health and wellness are required for a child to be well. Vegetables, fruits, and dairy, whole grains, like I mentioned before, and unprocessed meats are all alternate proteins, including beans or soy grains or nuts are essential. So of course we wanna limit, limit sugar and sugar substitutes. We want to reduce the amount of juice that is served and encourage water. Uh, we wanna reduce sodium in a child's diet and um, fats. Um, as much as possible, we wanna ensure that uh, healthy fats containing essential fatty acids like omega-3 and omega-6 that cannot be made in the body must come from food. So it's our job to set regular meal and snack times that work for everyone, share meal time with and eat with children as much as possible. We know that this develops relationships and we know that children um, and you learn and create a better relationship when you're eating together. And um, we want we want you to understand that uh, it's really important that children uh, learn to be as independent as possible. I know it's faster just to feed a child, but let them let them learn how to use a spoon. Let them learn how to put food into their mouth uh, so that they can eat independently. Include the child in age-appropriate food preparation as much as possible and setting the table if that's something that your uh, child care center does. And avoid using dessert as a bribe. Uh, serve healthy dessert cho uh, choices if you are serving desserts such as fruit or yogurt. Remember that good nutrition is essential during childhood as it is a time of rapid growth development activity. This is of also a vital time for healthy tooth development and the prevention of decay. And we, and, and we know that general eating habits and patterns are formed in the first few years of life. Um, sharing mealtime with students in a relaxing environment can help you understand uh, the child better. You can learn about their interests. Uh, this is a really important time for you to deepen your relationship with the child. And they call it this a feeding relationship. So it develops between you, the caregiver, and the child during eating. And uh, you can also see if the child is full, you, you'll be able to gauge uh, when they get hungry <clears throat> or if they're full. Um, let's go on to uh, the next slide and look at uh, feeding cues. So feeding takes a large amount of time throughout the day. Even before a child can talk, they show you signs of hunger or fullness by using sounds and movement. Crying is often uh, a late sign of hunger. So look for other signs of hunger so you can feed the child while he or she is still calm. Uh, it, uh, as we all know, feeding a child that is crying is very difficult. 
As a child gets older, he or she will develop a new, a new signs for hunger and fullness. Understanding a child's signs is important to help you know when and how often to feed, feed a child. Uh, and let the child decide how much they want to eat. The child does not need to finish a bottle or all the food in the jar or on the plate. Remember, food should not be used as a reward or punishment. So how do you know if a baby is hungry? So watch for these signs uh, that, uh, and, and you can call them hunger cues. So if their fist is moving to their mouth, their head is turning to look for, for a bottle, uh, they're becoming more alert or active, they're sucking on their hands or lip smacking or opening and closing their mouth, uh, they may be leaning toward the spoon. I'm just reading off the, um, the slide here. Uh, because if they become excited to see the food, or if they put spoon or food in the mouth, um, or they're trying to self-feed. Uh, many people think that crying is the only sign that a baby is hungry, but it's actually a sign of distress. Hungry babies will show signs of hunger before they begin to cry. Watching for and responding uh, early to a, a baby's hunger signs may help prevent them from crying. Let's take a closer look at this slide. So what is cue-based feeding. Cue-based feeding means feeding a baby by mouth when they show signs or cues that they are ready to eat and using, um, using those signs to determine how much food they actually need. Okay, so infant-led cue-based feeding. So if you see disengagement, so if the baby needs a break or wants to stop feeding, follow their signs, okay? Uh, the days where you would feed uh, the child until the bottle is empty or until the container is empty of food um, are, 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 are long gone. Um, doctors and nurses and healthcare professionals uh, do not encourage this kind of feeding. They want uh, us to uh, help the child become more independent in their eating and uh, to understand uh, more feeding cues. So if you see a cue and the baby wants to stop feeding, settle the baby. You may, this may be a good time to play with a child for 10 to 15 minutes. It may be a good time to change their diaper, uh, follow their cues. Um, so most of us know what hanger is. It's something that happens to us all. We're hungry and we're angry. It typically, typically happens when someone is past the point of hunger. So to avoid, avoid hunger with toddlers and children, offer regular meals and snacks. If they're caught up with play, they may not pay attention to their hunger cues because they still don't understand their own needs. It's okay to interrupt play, ask them to have a seat and offer them food. Asking how a specific part of their body feels, in this case, the stomach, helps children understand which part of the body they should listen to for feeling of hunger and fullness. As a child starts to understand their body and feelings, you can start asking general questions like, have you had enough to eat? It can take some time for the feeling of fullness to register. So it's okay for a child to ask for a second helping of food and, this, and then decide they don't actually want to eat more when it's on their plate. This is completely normal and we should actually encourage it. Trust a child's hunger and fullness cues as they are learning to navigate them. So fullness cues, uh, as listed on the slide, the child closes their mouth, they turn their head away, they slap food or a spoon away, they spit out food continually, they throw food continually, they push the food away. So these are all signs that the child is telling you, these are all cues uh, that they are no longer uh, in need of, of food. So let's go on to the next slide. And this is uh, food safety for children under five. But uh, this is something that we should all uh, be aware of is food safety. So uh, child care providers, parents, educators, all of us uh, know how quickly illness can spread among children in a center. Food is a common way for illness to spread. People who have uh, reportedly been ill can unknowingly contaminate the foods prepared and served to children. Contaminated food products brought into the kitchen can also cause an outbreak. So usually we think of food safety as a summertime concern, 
but foodborne illness can occur any time of the year. Food contaminated with harmful bacteria and viruses that cause illness spread quickly among children as they share toys, food, toilet facilities, mats, and come in contact with each other, um, uh, uh, other articles that are handled by children who are sick or who have been recently sick. So bacteria, viruses, molds, and parasites may contaminate both raw and cooked food products. The good news is that most of the foods pr produced and sold in Canada are safe to eat. Government ag agencies establish regulations and monitor systems to ensure a safe food supply. Unfortunately, uh, food products can be mishandled anywhere along the food production chain and contamination with harmful microorganisms can occur. Because microorganisms cannot be seen, all food products must be handled carefully. Some microorganisms cause food to spoil uh, and smell and look bad. When food smells bad, we get the message and do not eat it. Unfortunately, many of the microorganisms, pathogens, that cause foodborne illness do not alter the smell or the appearance of food. Food safety is everybody's responsibility. Remember that the teachers and other personnel often come in contact with the food served to children, and we all need to be familiar with safe food handling uh, practices. So the goal is to keep yourself and others from being sickened by microorganisms such as salmonella, E. coli, uh, botulism. Keeping foods chilled at proper temperatures is one of the ways to prevent or slow down the growth of these bacteria. So how do we stay clear of foodborne illnesses? Uh, so we need to refrigerate or freeze perishable foods right away. Foods that require refrigeration should be put in the refrigerator as soon as you get home. Stick to the two hour rule for leaving items needing refrigeration out at room temperature. Never allow meat, poultry, seafood, eggs, or produce, or other foods that require refrigeration to sit out room temperature for more than two hours. One hour if the air temperature is above 90 degrees. Also, when putting food away, don't crowd the refrigerator or freezer too tightly so that air can't circulate. Keep your appliances, make sure the fridge are at the proper temperature, check storage labels, directions, uh, use ready to eat foods as soon as possible, be alert for spoiled foods. Anything that looks or smells suspicious should be thrown out. Mold is a sign of spoilage. It can grow even under refrigeration. Mold is not a major health threat, but it can make food unappetizing. The safest practice is to discard food that is moldy. Um, be aware that food can make you very sick, even if it doesn't look, smell, or taste spoiled. That's because foodborne illnesses that, cause, that are caused by pathogenic bacteria, which are different from the spoilage bacteria that make foods go bad. Um, the other thing that we need to remember is if you lose electricity, you'll need to determine if the, uh, the food in the fridge is still safe. Uh, you can use a thermometer and, or you can um, you know, take, take a smell of the food and, and make sure that um, the foods are healthy. So children younger than five years are at an increased rate for food, foodborne illness and related health complications because their immune systems are still developing. Young children with developing immune systems cannot fight off infections as well as adults. In addition, young children produce less stomach acid that kills harmful bacteria, making it easier for them to get sick. So let's take a, a look at the slide. Uh, so food safety for children under five. So um, if you look to the left-hand side of the slide, so solids opened or freshly made. So strained fruits and vegetables refrigerate two to three days in the freezer six to eight months. Strained meats and eggs one day in the fridge, uh, one to two months in the freezer. Uh, meat, vegetable combinations, one to two days in the fridge, homemade baby foods. Uh, and this is something that, uh, you know, I know it takes a lot, a lot of time to make homemade baby food, but we can only keep it for one to two days. So 
Uh, why are children under five at risk? Young children's immune systems are still developing. Compared with other age groups, children under five years old have the highest incidence of several types of foodborne infections. So did you know 15% of children under five years with an E. coli 0157 develop hemolytic ure uremic syndrome? Okay, sorry if I said that wrong. 6% of the general population with E. coli develop HUS. HUS can cause damage to the liver, kidneys, and pancreas and can be fatal. So high-risk foods for children under five, raw or undercooked foods, including meat, poultry, and eggs, unpasteurized milk or juice, raw or undercooked oysters and seafood. So remember to always wash your hands and surfaces often. We're gonna talk about that later. Separate, uh, keep raw meat and poultry separate from ready to eat food, uh, cook foods to the proper internal temperature and get leftovers into the fridge within two hours of being cooked. Okay, now we all know the importance of um, hand washing. So proper food handling, okay? So again, uh, we're, we're looking at pretty much the same information, but it's really important that you wash your hands. When in doubt, throw it out. Uh, the danger zone, be very aware of how to cook, chill, separate, and clean, how to keep uh, children um, healthy and safe. So what we need to do, we need to clean our hands, we need to wash hands, utensils, and surf surfaces often. As we know, germs can spread and survive in many places. We need to separate, uh, we need to separate raw meat, poultry, seafood, and eggs, and set that spread illness causing bacteria to ready to eat foods. So keep them separate. Uh, in terms of chill, we need to refrigerate perishable foods uh, promptly, and we need to stop bacteria uh, that can cause food poisoning. Um, should teachers teach parents as well about foodborne illness? Yes. Uh, apart from integrating food safety into the curriculum across, you know, you can do it through math, science, technology, language arts, and social studies classes. Teachers should highlight food safety when talking to parents or in weekly newsletters. Um, teachers can also insist on hand washing and hand sanitizer use. And uh, I would encourage you to display posters of food safety all around uh, the child care center. Uh, safe storing, preparing, and serving of, of foods is just as important in child care programs as serving a balanced diet. Many children and adults get sick from eating foods that are not properly handled. It's important to follow food safety guidelines carefully whenever you buy, store, prepare, or serve foods. Guidelines for food safety begins with food purchasing and continues through storing, preparing, serving, and cleaning up after, afterwards. So let's go on to the next slide, uh, allergies. So anyone can develop allergies at any point during their life. Children are no exception, even toddlers. Children may develop food allergies or eczema earlier in life, but it usually requires exposure to multiple pollen seasons to develop allergic uh, symptoms and signs. Uh, allergies can also be more common for those whose family has a history of allergies. If one person is allergic, then it has to, uh, it has been estimated that a child has about um, a 50% chance of having allergies. So if a parent is allergic, uh, then it has been estimated that a child has about a 50% chance of having allergies. So what are the uh, symptoms of allergies in toddlers? There's some pictures of symptoms uh, on, on the slide. So allergy symptoms in toddlers can show from their head uh, to their toes. The main signs of allergies are watery, red eyes, runny nose, nasal, con nasal congestion, sneezing, um, shiners, and itching on the nose. Many parents also wonder if allergies could cause a fever in their child. Uh, yes, sometimes it does. Allergies, um, allergies uh, a sinus infection or the flu can also cause a fever. The typical symptoms of food allergies, on the other hand, are rash, hives, vomiting, diarrhea, 
and severe allergic shock. So common allergies in toddlers, uh, outdoors, pollen, insect bites and stings, indoors, mold, dust mites, uh, animal fur, uh, foods, nuts, uh, peanuts and tree nuts, eggs, dairy products like milk and milk-based uh, products, other things such as uh, detergents and cleaners, uh, and smoke, like cigarette smoke, vaping, uh, perfume. So what is um, a, a food allergy? A food allergy is an abnormal response of the body to a certain food. It is important to know that this is different than a food intolerance, which does not affect the immune system, although some of the same systems uh, may be present. Um, so uh, again, some of the symptoms of a food allergy are vomiting, diarrhea, cramps, hives, swelling, eczema, itching or swelling of the lips, tongue or mouth, itching, tightness of the throat, uh, difficulty breathing, wheezing, lowered blood pressure. So what do you do if a child has a food allergy? There is no medication to prevent food allergy. The goal of treatment is to avoid the foods that cause the symptoms. It is very important to avoid these foods and other similar foods in that food group. For children who have had a severe food reaction, uh, a doctor may prescribe an emergency kit that contains epinephrine, which helps stop the sim symptoms of severe reactions. So how do you care for a child? So learn to tell when a child has severe trouble breathing. Now, if a child has, um, has, a, um, has an allergy, most likely the parent will already let you know. But sometimes uh, allergies, the parent may not even be aware that their child has an allergy. So signs and symptoms of anaphylaxis, uh, airway, coughing, shortness of breath, wheezing, chest pain or tightness, tightening of the throat, difficulty swallowing, skin, uh, they, it may, they may, get, may get hives, swelling, itchiness, widespread redness, warmth. They may feel their stomach, they may feel nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, stomach pains or cramps. Uh, their heart, uh, they may look uh, faint, pale or blue, like a blue color. They may feel dizzy, weak. They may have a weak pulse uh, and their brain, they might be a little bit confused, feel more anxiety, have a headache, feel that something is happening to them. So the treatment for anaphylaxis includes an injection of epinephrine right away. If you don't have that, if you're worried at any time, always call 911 uh, if there is no plan in place. It's better uh, to be overly cautious. Um, so epinephrine injection is used along with emergency medical treatment to treat life-threatening allergic reactions caused by insect bites or stings, foods, medications, latex, and other causes. So uh, I have been uh, working in the school system um, K-12 to for over 30 years, and I've never had this happen um, where I needed to um, give a, an, a, a, an anaphylaxis. Uh, injection and I use an EpiPen, but um, it, it could happen. So in most care cases, parents are aware of their child's life-threatening allergy and provide the, the daycare with an EpiPen or, you know, steps uh, of what to do. If in doubt, always call 911. Okay, let's go on to the next slide. So let's talk about picky eaters. So <laughs> you see the broccoli there, you see the broccoli at the bottom. You see the, the three faces made by, by the kids. So this happens. Uh, what is picky eating? So prepare for it. Picky eating, also known as fussy, fatty, choosy, or selective eating, is a common behavior in early childhood. Uh, it can cause considerable stress uh, for caregivers and have a negative impact on our relationship. But it generally resolves with minimal or no intervention um, over time. So don't stress too much if a child refuses to eat a certain food product or a certain meal. Uh, re refrain from giving them anything in between meals just so that they eat. They will eat better at the next meal. Just make sure to offer the child a variety of foods from all food groups to make sure they are getting the right nutrients. So there's some examples of uh, plates prepared for children for picky eaters. 
Picky eating is often the norm for toddlers. After the, after the rapid growth of infancy, when babies usually triple in weight, a toddler's growth rate and appetite tends to slow down. Toddlers are also beginning to develop food preferences, a fickle process. A toddler's favorite food one day may hit the floor the next, or a snub nose, as you can see from the pictures, might suddenly become the one he or she can't get enough of. Uh, for weeks, they may eat one or two preferable foods and nothing else. Try not to get too frustrated by this typical toddler behavior. Just make healthy food choices available and know that with time, the child's appetite and eating behaviors will level out. Um, so remember, if you're uh, concerned about a child's diet, talk with their parent and then work together to make sure the child is getting all the necessary nutrients to grow and develop. Also keep in mind that picky eating usually is a normal uh, developmental stage for toddlers. So do your best to patiently guide them on their path toward healthy eating. So this concludes this PowerPoint for this week. Happy learning. Have a wonderful week, everyone.